November 29th, 1987, 23 year old ex prostitute Shirley Ann Ellis was walking down Route 40 to deliver a Thanksgiving platter to an AIDS patient undergoing treatment at the Wilmington Hospital. Equipped with her knowledge of the ability to hitch a ride on Route 40, she was unconcerned about the 14 mile trek. Her body was found by two teenagers at approximately 9.25 that evening, partially clothed and bound at the feet and ankles with duct tape stuck in her hair. I guess it was about 9.30, 10 o'clock, I got a call. It was my uh, partner, and he said that uh, there's a homicide, and it's out at the old Baltimore Pike Industrial Park. They've, his quote was, they found a body. On November 29th, 1987, Detective Joseph Swiskey responds to the crime scene and sees the victim firsthand. She was lying at the edge of the road, approximately three feet from the curb line. She was on her back. Her pants were pulled down to her knees. Her shirt was open and her breasts were exposed. One thing I also noticed, there was no disturbance in the ground around her. So it's like she was just dropped where she was found lying there. We found a piece of duct tape in the back of her hair. We realized that the duct tape had been on her mouth. You could see that there was mutilation in her breast area. She had a mark on her stomach. She had marks on her hands. It appeared she had put up a fight with her attacker. So on one hand, I'm seeing I have a murder, but then I'm seeing these added elements that were foreign to me. I didn't quite understand what what that all meant at that time. She was the first of five brutal murders. Over the next 10 months, former victims were taken and then dumped. They were left naked with obvious signs of torture, their hands bound and covered in blue carpet fibers whose suspected origin was the vehicle of their killer. Catherine DeMauro, a 31 year old with a history of prostitution arrest, was the second victim of the gruesome string of murders. She was taken late at night on June 28, 1988, and her body was found by workers building the Fox Run apartment complex the next morning. DeMauro was completely stripped of her clothing and there were ligature marks on her neck, as well as injuries on her head consistent with being bludgeoned with a hammer. A hammer was used in both of the murders to deliver the killing blows. On the evening of September 16, 1988, Michelle Gordon, a 22-year-old known prostitute, was last seen getting into the passenger side of a blue Ford van. Four days later, her body washed up on the banks of the Chesapeake and Delaware Canal. A cocaine addict, she was the only victim who died while being tortured. A medical examiner testified that the drugs in her system made her heart incapable of withstanding the shock of her beating. Prostitute Margaret Lynn Finner went missing on August 27, 1988. Roughly three months later, Finner was found dead near the Chesapeake and Delaware Canal. Her body was in such an advanced state of decay that a cause of death could not be determined. No one was ever charged. September 23, 1988, 26-year-old Kathleen Meyer was last seen hitchhiking along Route 40. Her body was never found. A witness aware of the murders identified her as being picked up by a man driving a blue Ford van and he had jotted down the license plate. The car was registered to Stephen Brian Pennell. Pennell was a middle-class, 30-year-old white male of seemingly average intelligence, with brown hair and small brown eyes. He worked as an electrician and lived with his wife and two children in Newcastle County, Delaware. From the outside, their lives appeared to be completely normal. However, unbeknownst to the world, darkness was lurking underneath. Pennell was abusive and controlling towards his wife, and participated in numerous extramarital affairs with prostitutes he picked up along Route 40. Anger towards his wife would then translate to anger towards women in general, and he would take it out on the prostitutes he could easily pick up unnoticed. Investigation into Pennell's history provided police with some interesting information. He had completed several courses on criminology at the University of Delaware and applied to be a police officer numerous times, but was denied each time for various unknown reasons. In an attempt to catch the killer before he struck again, undercover police officer Renee Tashner walked along Route 40, posing as a prostitute. This went on for weeks until the police finally caught their lucky break. A man in a blue Ford van drove up to Tashner, and she recognized him as Stephen Pennell. She asked him to turn on the lights in the back of his van under the pretense that she could admire it. 
When he did so, she saw bright blue carpeting, and she requested that he open the doors so she could get a closer look. He obliged, and she ran her hands across the carpet, extracting fibers. The fibers were a match for those found on the victims, and that was enough evidence to acquire a search warrant. Through a search of a shed on Pennell's property, the police discovered a torture kit that contained restraints, pliers, a whip, handcuffs, needles, and knives. Additionally, blood that was matched for victim Catherine DeMaro's was found on the interior walls of Stephen Pennell's van. November 29, 1988, exactly a year after he took his first victim, Stephen Brian Pennell was arrested and charged with murders of Catherine DeMaro, Michelle Gordon, and Shirley Ellis. On October 31, 1991, he was sentenced to death. His wife fought against the sentence, claiming her husband wasn't mentally stable, but extensive psychological analysis never uncovered any signs of mental illness. Although Pennell insisted he was innocent, he requested to be executed to spare his wife and two children the prolonged pain of him spending the rest of his life in prison, and he rejected his wife's attempts to appeal his convictions. He was put to death on March 14, 1992 by lethal injection after pleading no contest to killing Michelle Gordon and Kathleen Meyer. He was already serving two life sentences for convictions in the death of Shirley Ellis and Catherine DeMauro.